are putting together water goblets and I throw these in two pieces and I did that yesterday. So this is the top part of the goblet and these are the bottom. So the tops need trimmed, which I'll show you in a minute. And then I throw a bunch of them because no two are exactly the same height and then I swap them around to get them to be close to the same height and look like they uh, are close to the same. So let's take a look at trimming these. Okay, so here I am at my trimming wheel. I have two wheels actually. And here is our goblet top that I'm going to put on our Giffen grip. Okay, so I'm going to use my shore form tool to get the majority of the excess clay off. And I want a nice round shape here. <coughs> Ivy, stop. And then I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit with this little tool here. One of the little trimming tools. And then this, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of scoring on while it's on the wheel, like that. And smooth it off with one of these mud tool sponges. And that is all it is to trimming each of these little tops of our goblets and so I'm going to trim those and then we will play switcheroo to see if we can get them all about the same height. All right so now that these are all trimmed we are ready to figure out which goblet goes on which base. So I have an order for eight of these. I made nine and I always make an extra when I have a custom order. So um Trying to find our tallest. Looks like this one's our tallest, so I'm going to find our shortest goblet, which looks like it might be this one. And so I just kind of start with there. So some people are, they use a measuring guide or even a laser, and they want all of these to be exactly the same. I'm not part of that school. Um, I feel like if you're going to purchase handmade, it should show some of the imperfections, like slightly different heights, slight, slightly different shape. And so that's why I just don't bother to try to get everything the same because it is handmade and it should look like it's handmade. So I'm going to start with putting these on their little different pedestals and we'll take a look and see where we need to switch around and get them close to the same height but not exactly the same height. Let's see. So I start swapping them. So I'm going to do that for a minute and then I'll get back with you and you can see where we ended up. So I think we have them as close as we're going to get them without driving myself crazy swapping and swapping and continuing to swapping. So the next thing that I do, and we'll just start on one here. Let me move a couple out of the way and make some space so you can see what I'm doing. We'll take this one right here. Okay, so um, I actually had a girlfriend who made goblets and she said she used to have to have a glass of wine before she would even start working on putting these together. So it is quite the process. So I'm using this little scoring tool and scoring the base. And of course I already scored the base of the top, but I'm gonna go ahead and score it a little bit more. And these aren't even quite leather hard yet. They're on the soft side. And so this, I have a great big bucket of slip. We keep a great big bucket of slip all the time in the studio and when we run out we just make a bunch more so we aren't making slip every day. This bucket we've had probably for three months and been using it. All right so here's the fun part getting them straight and 
even after you get them perfectly straight, and I just kind of eyeball it and spin it around and see if I feel good about it, um, they will tend to tip a little bit. So, because there's no perfection with these, they're not a perfectly shaped piece, top or bottom. We're just trying to get as close to perfect as we can. And I'm gonna call that good. And I have done things like put a straight edge beside it to try to get it to, to visually see it better. But honestly, I've found that just eyeballing it is the best way to do it. And so that is it for putting them together. And then I'm gonna clean up this edge where I put the slip. And then I'm gonna dry these slowly because I want these to dry evenly because if you don't dry evenly, there's a good chance that this bottom and this top will come apart. So drying evenly is an important part of the process. So I have a bunch of these to put together and they will get, once they are uh, drier and we cut them off the bats, then they'll get cleaned up one more time before we sign them and put them through the firing process. So that is it for today, goblet making. I'm gonna show you a picture of a finished one in just a second. And this is Sue with Salvaterra Pottery from Weaverville, North Carolina, and we will catch you next time. Thank you, bye.